I'm here with Cheryl Boglioli, and we are making mixed media magic. Hey, Cheryl. Hey. So you brought this beautiful canvas, and you Thank said it's you. just layers that are easy to put together. It is. It doesn't take much time at all. I'm going to show you how to do it real quickly. So the first thing that I did was I took an, an app and took a photo of my daughter and just changed it to a contrast value. And then I printed it using a laser printer because we don't want it to bleed. So just make sure you use toner or laser printer on tissue paper by using repositional paper, uh, adhesive on regular copy paper. And so once we have the printed out, I've taken a little bit of our textile hardener. It's a universal medium that'll work on anything that's not plastic, basically. So here I'm gonna paint with it. And first thing I'm gonna do is- And you did is, the kind of painting job that I like, which is just kind of eh. You yes, because I, I mean? wanted to leave some open space. And I wanna leave some open space for the magic that we're going to happen in just a few minutes. So I'm just adding a real light, thin coat. And remember, this is tissue paper, so we just have to be careful and then add a little bit on top. Rip, it will. Because once you get it wet with that gel medium, it tears. Exactly. But I have one that's all ready to go. And I love the way that tissue paper goes semi-transparent so that you can really see it. Yes. And I don't worry about the edges because we're going to cover up some of the edges when we work with this. So now I want to add some more texture to this because I'm all about the layers, you know. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, we're, we just cut some stencils. You can just easily cut oh, some yeah. stencils. Oh yeah. I was going to say, I have a stencil right here that we cut using our electronic cutter and of course you can cut any design perfect. you like. Perfect. So we have this and I'm just going to place this on the side. I wanted to go over just a little bit and I created my own modeling paste cool. by using a little bit of sculpture powder along with our textile hardener and I'm just going to apply this. For people this. who don't know a lot about modeling paste, can you just tell us what it is? It's going to dry stiff and it's going to, it's something that you can create texture on your canvases. I can use it with a palette knife to actually paint it on there to create peaks and valleys or with a stencil if I place it on the stencil and give a little smush and then a little push a smush and a push, a smush and I a push like that. then we're going to run it through the stencil and now the thicker you put it the heavier it's going to be or the thinner it's going to be smoothed out so then when we lift it you can see <gasps> so that we've got cool. this really you get the dimension of exactly. it exactly so we have that let me take that from please you please do there you go because again i have one that is ready to go so here I've actually added it and you can see that as it dried, it starts to crack a little bit, but I even want more crackles. So this is when the fun starts happening. Wait I, a second, I thought we were having fun already. I, I'm already having fun. <laughs> That's true. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm not worrying about mixing it. I am just going to start and pour a little bit onto I'm getting my don't be, you know, just be careful. You don't want to just turn it upside down. And I want to mix a little color because I don't want it all just one color. So you're color. not actually mixing the color on a palette. No. And you're using the same colors that you used in the background, is that right? Yes. So kind of like a gold Keeping or a yellow it all and consistent. a white. Yes, it's more like a yellow ochre and an ivory. Then I'm gonna use my palette knife. Okay. And we're just going to start and blend. So palette knives come in all sorts of different shapes, and I noticed you're using sort of a large rounded one. Earlier we were using one that had more of a point and a taper. Yes. Um, is there a reason that you're using that shape? Well, because this is a larger canvas, so I definitely want to be able to cover space, but I like the offset so that I can manipulate it where I want it to go. So I could just continue to add this and move it around. So you're avoiding the photo it looks like and most yes. of the stenciling. So you're just trying to cover the areas that don't have a photo and aren't Correct. stenciled. And then we're going to take and I'm going to spray. Oh, wow, this is wet. <laughs> this I'm is, so nervous. No, it has to be wet. So I'm just gonna random areas, spray a couple different colors. Is this paint? Is this ink? Is it water? It is a water soluble ink. And okay. I want to, I'm trying to protect the photo again. I don't want to do too much. I love that you're just using your hand to protect it. You're not even <laughs> putting down like a mask or anything. It's no. just, you're like, uh, just a little bit of, you know, help here. Exactly. So see, I've put this water soluble ink on here. So now watch what happens. So now when I add a little heat to it, I want to get further away just to kind of start heating it up. I don't want to just blow it all over the place. Now, could you do this technique with a hair dryer or do you have to have a heat gun? You need heat. So it has to be so really, really directed and hot. It does, it needs to have a little heat to it. But now as I get closer, now watch. 
Can you see? Look at, look. Oh, I see that there are little cracks that are starting. That's yes. really cool. So the more heat, the more you can see that it starts to crack. So the reason you're adding the color in is not just for color, but because the cracks are gonna be in the other colors. They're kind of white. And so we wanna be able to really see that cracking effect. Uh, correct. Once it's completely dry, then you can take a sponge and water, and then you could just kind of sponge off some of the color where you don't want it. You can continue to add embellishments. So I think you have some flowers there. I do, I'm super excited. So I have flowers and I think I just have the same paint that you were using before. And we're exactly. keeping everything consistent with the same paint. And these are just paper flowers yeah, that you can find anywhere. Yeah, they're just little craft flowers. And you told me that I couldn't mess this up. I'm a little you bit nervous. You can't really, just kind of dip it in there and then rub your fingers squish in it. Squish it around, squish it around. Okay, so this now looks just very white. Yes. Did I do this right? Just, I would take off a little bit, just kind of squish it. So oh, that it, I see. So it goes you want to make sure that it's definitely amber. in the back. I was so worried about getting stuff on the back because I thought no, you weren't supposed you, to. No, you want that to act as an adhesive yeah. also. So this is your adhesive. So and then your you just coloring. throw it on the canvas. Sure. And then if we look in. at the finished one that you have there, it's beautiful and your daughter looks fabulous. What a great memory craft. Thank you Thank so much. You.